Amen. And I told the uh, I told the singers, I told the singers, we're going to be singing in the key of whatever. Amen. And their job today, very simple, find me and stay with me. <laughs> Amen. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand. Let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side. Hold in your hand, so let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. Let the worshipers arise. Any worshipers in the house? I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the king. Let the worshipers. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender in my all. I surrender to the King. Father, I hear it grow louder. The song of your redeemed as the saints of every nation are awakening to sing.
more time. And I long to worship Thee. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within.
somebody let it be.
that my God is faithful and true. I declare and decree that He has blessed me with all of His blessings. I declare and decree that I'm fully funded for all of God's purposes in my life. I count it a joy and an honor to bring His title of my offering to the storehouse. Somebody give me a hallelujah. Amen. Come and give that to the Lord this morning. God bless the gift and the giver. And you may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, I mentioned about Wednesday night, Bible study. I will give you a heads up. Okay? It appears that um, there's going to be some asphalt laying from where uh, this project ends to the city limits from where this project ends to 15th Street, and then they're going to be doing from 15th Street from the city limits past I-35. If they're in the middle of that, we may not have Wednesday night Bible study. I will let you know as soon as I know. Okay, is that fair enough? Yes. All right, we may we may just have to do it online. I don't know what their schedule is going to be. I, I kind of doubt they're going to be doing it Tuesday morning. <laughs> yeah. Unless they got it bladed, all the snow bladed off first. So, anyway, God help us. Amen. Yeah. It's good to be with you this morning. I have a, this message was just kind of blasted into my soul and my spirit uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I'd like to share it with you. This is, this is, uh, the title of this message is The Jesus That People Don't Want to Talk About or Hear About. Okay, all right, I'll just go ahead and preach it then. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And I pray, Almighty God, that as we open our ears and hearts to hear the word of the Lord, empower us and enable us to be a doer and not just a hearer. And Father, we just pray that you would speak directly to us. Let the word of God penetrate our hearts to change our minds. Let me say that again. I pray that the word of God would penetrate our hearts to change our minds. Amen. Yes. And Father, we give the praise and the glory for it. And all the God's people said amen. 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 All right. Well, before I get to that part of Jesus, let's talk about the part that people like to talk about. Okay. We all like to talk about little baby Jesus. Amen. As Ricky Bobby would say, sweet baby Jesus. If you don't know who Ricky Bobby is, don't worry about it. Okay? Sweet. I mean, this is Christmas time. Christmas time is here. Okay? Love Christmas time. It's festive. Okay? Get to, get to do the kids... Christmas plays and Christmas programs and Christmas concerts. Mm -hmm. I remember one, one Christmas play we had here. We had we had all of the uh, uh, decorations and props on the on the platform, and we had part of it that was propped up by cinder blocks, and we had kids in little sheep sheep costumes, and one of the kids in the little sheep costume was gnawing on a cinder block. <laughs> you, you just got to love that stuff, man. You just got to love that stuff. Christmas music. Amen. Being with family and friends. Christmas tree. Christmas presents. Amen. Baby Jesus. Everybody loves little baby Jesus and his walking clothes. We like to go by, uh, with Roxy and I, and we would do this with the kids, and we uh, the one time we took a bus of people, go see Christmas lights and Christmas decorations in people's yeah. yard, man. Yeah. That was just, that, that's always just fun. And, and you can see the the absolutely unscriptural decorations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You're still free. <laughs> okay. Let me help you out. Okay. The wise men didn't make it to the manger. Bible says. It says they made it to the house a couple of years later. 
but we're not going to worry about it. We won't, we won't get offended. Okay? Well, we might. Who cares? Amen? We, we, we love talking about the servant Jesus. The Jesus that bowed down. Listen to me this morning. That bowed down and washed the disciples' feet. Man, we love talking about that Jesus. That humble, meek, lowly servant. We love talking about that Jesus. We love talking about miracle Jesus. Hello? To heal. To raise from the dead. To do things that nobody had ever seen before. To turn the water into wine. I got it. I'm, I'm trying to keep you lightened up till I get to the heavy stuff, okay? Never forget this. My dad, senior pastor Pop, was down at Brother Archie Murdy's church in uh, uh, Enid, Oklahoma. Brother Archie Murdy, that man had a heart twice the size of Texas. But sometimes he was just a walking disaster area. I mean, he, we, he, we could go into a restaurant with a three-piece suit and walk out like he had been hit with a, two tornadoes and a half a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> so Dad was preaching at, at Brother Murdy's church, and Brother Murdy, Brother Murdy, to start by those, Brother Murdy is is responsible for keeping Dad in the ministry. He was the only one that would encourage and strengthen Dad. Just keep going, man. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Well, Dad, he preached a message of repentance, hellfire, and I mean to tell you, he was laying it out thick, hard, uh, hot, and heavy. And I mean, he was just laying it out, and he was blowing and going. He turned the service over to Archie Murdy for the altar call. Brother Archie Murdy got up there and told the story. He said, this old moonshiner boy was driving late at night with his truck. Oh, and this Brother Murdy, this is right before an altar call. Okay? And the old federal officer pulled him over. He said, son, what you hauling in there, boy? I'm just hauling water. Our well run dry. Hauling water up so we can have water at the house. I said, well, I said, let's take a let's take a taste of that. So he took that federal officer took a little sip and said, "Boy, that ain't water. That's shine." That boy, boy said, "Doggone it! That Jesus did it again. <laughs> Turn that water into wine." Amen. Somebody once said, and I think it's been said, but there's a bigger miracle than turning the water into wine. Yeah. There's turning the wine on into a preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There's the forgiving Jesus that everybody likes to talk about. Yeah. Okay, they yeah. drug the woman into a circle, getting ready to stone her, and said, Jesus, since you're the one that's... Uh, Keeps talking about your priestly duties. Here she is. She was caught. What do you say? And Jesus in his infinite wisdom didn't say nothing. Just wrote that. Uh, start, uh, knelt down start writing. Just start writing. The next thing you know, all the accusers disappeared. Now what did Jesus say? Where are thy accusers? Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sit no more. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Jesus was getting ready to heal the person who said that his sins are forgiven. And they said, what? You can't do that. He says, not only can I do that, but watch this. And he forgave the person their sins and then he healed them. Amen. 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 That's the forgiving Jesus. Amen. How many of you love the forgiving Jesus? Amen. 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 How many of you know that since, since Jesus is God in the flesh... That what he speaks for us to do, he is infinitely greater. So when he says for us to forgive 70 times 7, how many of you know God's love is and forgiveness is much more infinite than that? Yes. Amen. amen and amen. Well, how about the feisty Jesus? Feisty Jesus. We like, we like the feisty Jesus 
Okay? Braid, uh, uh, braiding a whip and turning tables over and calling people names. What? Yeah. He, 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 he always was dealing harshly with the religious group. You nest of snakes. How would you like to hear that? What happened? Well, you know. I mean, wait a minute. One minute, one minute he's knelt down and forgiving a woman and he's calling me a nest of snakes. What's up with that? You dead inside like a tomb that just has been painted over to make you look good. That's the feisty Jesus. The feisty Jesus that said, Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed to you who, oh, this revelation about who I am and what I am, but God and his spirit have revealed to you. And a couple of steps later, he wheels it on and says, get thee behind me, Satan. That's the feisty Jesus. We love the feisty Jesus as long as he ain't being feisty with me. He fights you with everybody else, Jesus. Go get him. How about the struggling Jesus? We, we talked about this on, on several occasions. The struggling Jesus. The Jesus in, in the uh, garden. Struggling, fighting, struggling, and fighting, struggling, and fighting, and struggling. Okay? We love the victorious Jesus who came out of that garden. Didn't stay in the garden and kept fighting. He said, nevertheless, I will be done. And walked out victorious. We love the crucified Jesus. We don't like the picture. We don't like the depiction. We don't like the reality of the brutal fleshly suffering, but we like to crucify Jesus because that gave us a path of redemption and restoration. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Jesus was that conduit ascended and 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 between heaven and earth and became that conduit. For all of hell and all of heaven, just for you and me. Think about that for a minute. We love the crucified Jesus. We love the resurrected Jesus. Amen. 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 The Jesus that said, I am alive forevermore. Okay, I, I died, but, but guess what? Not only did I have victory in the garden, but I had victory in the cross, and I also had victory in the tomb. Yes. The resurrected Jesus that gives you and I hope, yes. that says, there, there's not a resurrection, Jesus is the resurrection. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. Amen. We, we love the ascending Jesus. Okay, as he spoke to his disciples and apostles and said, I'm leaving. I'm heading out. But I'm sending somebody in my stead. I'm sending somebody in my place called the Holy Spirit. And he will take care of the rest of business until it's time for me to return. They saw him ascending into heaven. And... Uh, Stephen saw him at the right hand of the throne. That's the other part, that I, the standing Jesus. Hello, he's not just seated at the right hand of the throne, but sometimes he's standing at the right hand of the throne. Okay? The ever interceding Jesus. The mediator, church, mediator between God and man. Ever interceding for you and I. We love that Jesus. Pray for me on harder, Jesus. Hello, somebody. Now, let's get to uh, this next part. We love the rapture Jesus. Well, some two people do. Glad that two people do. Let's read it. 
But uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Say, thank God I have hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I love the rapture Jesus. Okay? Jesus coming back. He's, that eastern sky is going to split wide open. He's going to shout. The shofar is going to blow. The archangel is going to shout, Maranatha! The Lord comes. Amen. Love that. Now we take a hard turn. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Now we're going to take a hard turn. Because there's a coin flip side of this. Rapture Jesus. Now I'm going to start talking to you. Saints of the Most High God who are in the house and watching online. Because now I'm going to start talking to you about the Jesus that people don't want to talk about and people don't want to hear about. But I think, as Revelation says on numerous times, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of religious and theological liberty here, but just bear with me and understand what message I'm trying to get across. But we have the rapture Jesus, but there's also the stop sign Jesus. No, you can't come. You're not ready. I, 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 I knew I was going to lose all my amens, but that's okay. Because because when the when the shofar blows and the shout of Jesus happens and the shout of the archangel, some of us are going. Yep. That's right. Amen. Some of us are. Right. Jesus will say, "No, you you you're not going to make this trip." And let me say something on the flip side of a scripture that we often use. Jesus said to not judge according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Let me say this this morning. That happens both ways. We look at the outside appearance of somebody and say, I don't think they're saved. They don't look saved to me. But there's also other people that we are being we are being fooled by that give us every single appearance that they are living a godly Christian life. They've got all the right phrases. They do all the right things. They go to church regularly. And they are no more ready to meet the Lord than the devil himself. And Jesus says, I'm not the one that you like to talk about, but there is a stop sign of Jesus that's going to say, you can't come. <laughs> that's no fun. How, how many of you would like... I'm going to wait till the last... But we'll just do it now. <clears throat> Life was filled with guns and war, yep. and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. Children died, the days grew cold, a piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. 
I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. A man and wife asleep in bed. She hears a noise and turns her head. He's gone. I wish we'd all been ready. Two men walking up the hill. One disappears. The one's left standing still. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come. And you've been left behind. Mm. Mm. So the Lord asks a question, asks two questions today of every single one of us that are in the house, every single one of us that are watching online. Number one, are you ready? And number two, are you busy? Now listen. Both of those questions are important, but they go hand in hand. Because you can be ready and not busy, and you can be busy and not ready. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, 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 listen, I do a lot of things for the Lord. They, none of them make me ready. That's right. Okay? That's right. You can't come. You're not ready. You've, you've led a false life, making sure, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, making sure that everybody thinks you're ready, but I, the Lord God, sees the heart. I look past, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, I look past all that fluff and stuff. I look past all the pageantry. <laughs> I look past all the t-shirts and all the bumper stickers. I look past all the, the, the quotes you put on Facebook. And I look into the heart. And, 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 and God knows whether or not what we're saying and doing matches up with the condition that our heart is. I wish somebody... But say amen. amen. Matthew three eleven. I indeed baptize you, this is John the Baptist, with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. fire whose span in, is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Yep. This is the Jesus that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to hear about. We all want to hear about that lowly, meek, humble servant that loves everybody. But we don't want to talk about this Jesus, and we don't want to hear about this Jesus. Let, let me give you a better a, a translation. Okay? He has a winnowing fork in his hand. This is old time language. What they would do is they would gather all the wheat and put it on the floor. And then it would be crushed. Ground it down. And then the master of the harvest, hello somebody, would bring in a winnowing fork and he would begin Toss it up in the air. Toss it up in the air. And what would happen is the, the wind would blow and it would begin to remove the chaff and all the chaff would be scattered and the only thing that would re be remaining is wheat. <laughs> if I can lift it up, I will gather all men unto me. But there's also come a time when Jesus is going to be separating. Amen. He's going to be separating. Amen. He's going to be separating. Notice how the chaff is so 
closely attached to the wheat. I wish we'd all been ready. Well, if you dare I go to the next one. Yes. Okay, so be it. Amen. This is Jesus speaking, Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that what? Does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Are you ready and are you busy doing the will? Amen. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name, in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name we have we not done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Let me translate that better. Depart from me because you are more interested in your own kingdom and your own will and your own desires and satisfaction than you were in the kingdom of God. Now, listen to me. Say to the most I got, I'm going to get, I'm going to get dirty, mean, and nasty. Okay? God is barely, he is concerned, but God is barely concerned, just barely concerned with how you act in church. God is really concerned with how you act outside of church. God is barely concerned. He's concerned, but just barely concerned with what you do when people are watching. He is really concerned with what you do when nobody's watching. Amen. Amen. Huh. And I'm going to tell you this morning, as the old saying goes, I, I'm sorry this ain't one of those shout messages, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God spoke this and, and said, preach it. There's an old saying, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time or something close to that. Okay? Ain't none of you going to fool God. Ain't none of us going to fool God. Okay? And, 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 and you, you, can, you can come up to me and give me your fluff and stuff story uh, of how of how things are, and God will penetrate and see through that nonsense and said, and, and, and one day, listen, you're you're not going. I'm not your problem. You're not going to have to stand before me. God is your problem, and all 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 of the lies and deception. And all of the, oh, I don't, I, I hope nobody finds out about that. And all of that stuff is going to be revealed. Yes, it is. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And all, all of the blame game. Well, if my wife, if my husband, if my kids, if my dad, if my mom, if my pastor, if the elders, if my brothers and sisters in Christ, if, 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 and God is going to go, whoosh, he's going to throw all that chaff in the air and it's going to get blown away. And then he's going to say, now, are you weak? Part of the chaff. Because if you're part of the chaff. You're going to get bundled up and burned. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said. Depart from me! Mm. My, 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 my. Amen. I, I, I will tell you, and I'm, I'm not just necessarily solely uh, talking about the rapture, okay? Let me tell you something, folks. Every single day, 
people are meeting God. And they're either meeting God on good terms or they're meeting God on not so good terms. I wish we'd all been ready. Now, listen, listen, okay? Don't panic if you're not perfect. We're not talking about perfection here. We're talking about heart versus appearance. Talk about heart versus appearance. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? Let, let, let me, let me, let me, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me put it to you this way. Don't, don't let me see how you're living. Don't let me see the appearance of how you're living. I don't care about the appearance of how you're living. What, what, what God wants to know is how's your heart living? Amen. 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 How's your heart living? Are you washed in the blood? Okay. One more. Dare I? Revelation 19. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yes. Yeah. Well, that doesn't sound like the cute little baby Jesus. That's because it's not. He is coming to judge perfectly and righteously. And he's coming to enact justice. Perfectly and righteously. And he ain't putting up with nonsense. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Anybody ever seen somebody that had flame of fire in their eyes? Yes, I have. Sister Roundtree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not, uh, they're not, they're not happy and, and they're not smiling. They're, they, they've got a purpose. And on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture that had been what? Dipped in blood. And his name is called. The word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth went a sharp sword that with it he would, he would smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of his fierceness, of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath the vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He came to be born as a baby, meek, humble, lowly, a child in a manger, a lamb to the slaughter. But he's coming back as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, in the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And, and, the, and the question is this morning, are you ready? Yes. And are you busy? Amen. Mm. Are you ready? And are you busy? I, I really, truly believe this. Those of us that are going to make it, and, and, and I'd like to speak a word of encouragement that all of us are going to make it. That's between you and God. But I'm going I'm to tell you what I really, truly believe. I think those of us that do make it are going to be shocked and surprised when we get to heaven. There's going to be people who are going to say, how did you make it? 
And we're going to look for people and say, why didn't they make it? Because God, listen to me. Mm. I hope that you hear this next part. God ain't no fool. And he ain't going to be fooled. God ain't no fool, and he ain't going to be fooled. And he's not playing games. And folks, we, we have destiny and purpose and mission and vision to accomplish here, but I'm, I'm just going to tell you, we need to have a new fire burning within us to get ready Amen. and get busy. Say that again. Get ready Amen. and get busy. And, and if you ain't ready, get ready. And if you ain't busy, get busy. Hello, somebody. I, 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 there, there, I, there is no way in the world that I would miss heaven. But sometimes I get stupid. Well, I'm the only one. I get stupid and I get fleshy. God has to get that, that shepherd staff with that nook and hook me. I don't know about you. But sometimes I'm a jerk and God has to jerk me back. Here we go again. I'm the only one. Mm. Get ready and get busy. The second part to this sermon, God willing to preach, don't rise, will we preach next Sunday morning. And I had a vision yesterday, Evan and Tammy, I had a vision. I, 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 I may share it with you later, but I'm not going to share it till next Sunday morning. And, it, and it, it shook me. I mean, it shook me, it startled me. And I've And I began weeping because of it. And I'm going to tell you, I wasn't looking for a vision. I was just trying to get ready for a celebration of life service. And between that front foyer and this sanctuary, I mean, it was like I hit a brick wall. And I started weeping. Come next Sunday. Hedge about and eyes are closed. We're not going to do an altar call this morning. We're just going to altar call right where we are. Where we, I, I, here, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Build an altar right where you are right now. Build an altar. And let's pray together this morning. Search me, O oh God. With a fine tooth comb and a magnifying glass. Every nook and corner and cranny, every crack that's in my foundation, look at it. And see if there's one piece of leaven. One speck of leaven. One tiny speck of leaven. See if I have one in there. Reveal it to me. Spotlight it. That it may be swept out and never enter my life ever again. Forgive me, O oh God, for my sins, my trespasses, my debts, my iniquities, my shortcomings, my fallings, my failings. And then, create in me a clean 
heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Oh my God. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Towards you, oh God. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm going to preach and pray at the same time. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Toward my spouse, oh God. Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me toward my family. Oh God. Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me toward my brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh God. Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me toward my co workers. Oh God. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me toward my neighbors, oh God. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me toward my enemies. Those that have attacked me viciously, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Let me surrender and get ready and get busy. Help me, oh God. I surrender. Get ready and get busy. I surrender. Get ready and get busy. In the name of Jesus. All the weights and obstacles and obstructions and excuses. Let them fall by the wayside and be destroyed. Spirit of the living God, let your anointing fall and break every yoke of bondage this morning in this house. In the name of Jesus. And renew. And, re and renew a right spirit within me. God, in Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Go with a trench on one side of my heart. And go with a trench. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I wish somebody would hear what I'm praying this morning. To the other side of my heart. Uh, dig a trench on both sides and start the sweet, new, fresh water flowing and purge me, cleanse me, get the bitterness, uh, the ugliness, uh, the hatefulness, uh, the spitefulness, uh, the vindictiveness, uh, get it out of me! And cleanse me, O oh God. Cleanse me, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Oh, I'm just... I'm just Folks, I gotta go with what I'm feeling. Cleanse me, O oh God, from the backbiting, the backstabbing. The tripping up of my brothers and sisters in Christ. The trampling over. My God this morning cleanse me and purge me. May I lift them up. Wow. God, get me ready, get me busy. May I lift them up instead of putting them down. Amen. Amen. My God, this morning, i got to pray that and preach that again. Create in me a clean heart so that I may lift my brothers and sisters up instead of putting them down. Amen. Jesus, God Almighty. From the north, south, east, and west. Father, we thank you for it. I'm getting ready. Say it with me. I'm getting ready. And I'm getting busy. I'm getting ready. And I'm getting busy. Listen to me. Stay in prayer this morning. But if you're lamp is just barely flickering get some more oil poured in if your lamp is burned out get some more oil poured in and get it reignited 
If your lamp is burning, check the oil level. <laughs> check the oil level to make sure that it doesn't go out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Check the oil level. Let the Spirit of Almighty God blow upon the embers of your heart and soul and spirit and mind today that there may be a raging fire of holiness, righteousness, and getting ready and getting busy. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Stand and give the Lord a round of applause. He's worthy this morning of all praise and worship. Thank you, Lord. Take care of. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye. God bless you. Love you. We'll see you soon.